Hi folks, welcome back to another video. This is Gig Apps Exposed here on YouTube. This channel exposes the lies, the fraud, the manipulation of the gig app companies trying to get drivers, delivery drivers, rideshare drivers, a better than fair wage going into the future. Today's video is a, a lot different uh, than you're used to seeing here on, on my channel. Uh, I wanted to share a video with you from a channel that I did uh, for at least three years, well, two and a half years, before I got into the gig economy stuff here on YouTube. And um, this uh, this is what led me to actually do the stuff here on YouTube uh, to come over here. But uh, with that said, uh, the channel that I had was called Waking Up the Sheep. And if you're interested in going over there to, uh, to watch any of the videos I made the past couple of years... Uh, prior to this, these channels, uh, DoorDash Sucks and Gig Economy, uh, DoorDash Gig Economy Police and Gig Apps Exposed channels, if you want to see them, uh, please click on the link in the video here. So basically, uh, this is a Halloween special video, uh, you, you shall say, or we shall say. It's October 30th, 2023. It's current. I'm making this, this intro here. But the video you're going to watch is actually from 2021. And you can see it if you go to the links. You'll see that I posted it to, um, back in 2021. Um, and it was right before I started the channel, the channel DoorDash Sucks channel. I, it was kind of a smooth transition over in, into that. And I occasionally I would mention that I had another channel and everything. But uh, there's a lot of material over there, folks. Um, a lot of material that you should actually watch uh, ha that has uh, indirectly nothing to really do with the gig economy. But uh, nonetheless, it's uh, world news and events and a lot of things that you... There's just lots of videos there, folks. And I also have Waking Up the Sheep too. If you click on the link in the uh, Waking Up the Sheep page, there's a link button and you can hit that and it brings you to my second channel as well. Lots of material over there. But this the reason I'm posting this video is because... The Lord put it on my heart to do so, um, to share it with you, because it might wake you up or wake some of your friends and family up, and uh, you may disagree with what's in it, but at least uh, you can't say you didn't watch it and you didn't understand it. That's all up to you, but anyways, uh, so this is the Halloween extravaganza, because tomorrow is supposed to be Halloween, it's October 31st, and I'm going to let the video speak for itself what's in it. Please watch it till the till the end of the video. Even if you don't agree with it, just listen to it, watch it. Uh, I would suggest watching this video rather than just listening it to to it in your car. I know a lot of you do that. You know, you what, listen to me as a podcast, and that's great. But if you have a chance to watch it, I would actually do that. Be a lot better because you'd be able to see a lot of uh, visuals and things you need to see in there. Okay. So with that said, I'm gonna I'll leave the links to my channel so you could go over and sub to me over at over at uh waking up the sheep uh it's on bit shoot uh actually to be honest with you scratch that folks i can't leave the links in this video you're going to have to search to search for, for my channel manually i forgot about that i recently tried to post external links on a couple of my channels and it gave me a warning or something saying I, that you can't do it or they won't let you post the link so you're gonna have to you're actually gonna have to look for me manually so if you go to b-i-t-c-h-u-t-e dot com and you go to the search bar and you put the words you have to separate them so put waking up the sheep it'll bring you to my channel okay and if you want to watch the videos on halloween externally from this video you would put waking up the sheep and then space and then put Halloween. And it'll bring you to three different videos that I had posted in the past. But my channel has a whole lot more over there. So that was a ch that's a channel that still exists. I haven't posted there um, in geez, well over a year, year and a half now, I think. And uh, eventually I'll probably be posting there again. But it's another alternate source for you to find me. I know this is the gig community, but a lot of this stuff is tied in to things indirectly. So anyways, enough said. Let's go on with the video. And uh, please watch this video all the way through. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next one.
Hello folks, welcome to the video, today's video, and welcome to the channel. This is Waking Up the Sheep here on BitChute, and could you please just do me a favor and pause the video and hit the like button and the subscription button so you won't miss another video, and also the notification bell that will inform you when I have any new videos. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And so today's video, folks, is pretty important. Um, it's October 30th one day before the pagan holiday Halloween and I wanted to do this special video and tell you the dangers of Halloween and what's not good about it because a lot of people especially here in America sell, uh, Halloween is a billion dollar industry and it's really celebrated a lot with people going to Halloween parties getting dressed up and the kids go out and grab that Halloween candy and as a person, you know, you may have been doing this your whole life with your family and your friends and you think nothing of it, but you have to know that uh, Lord and Savior and our Creator finds it detestable. It's an abomination to the Lord. Now, until I knew this up until 2018, folks, you know, I used to watch a lot of crazy horror movies, especially the movie Halloween with the, the, the maniacal killer Michael Myers. You probably all have seen movies like that. And I gotta say, folks, that you have to try, if you're a Christian and you're wanting to do everything right for the Lord, you need to get away from that stuff, folks. Denounce it, ask God to remove it out of your life, and He will. Um, and, you know, a lot of you people may be saying, well, what's it doing? It's not hurting me, it's not hurting my family, I don't do any evil stuff, I just go to these parties, I watch these movies. Well, it psychologically brainwashes you and puts... Uh, really bad stain on you and then it's also hurting the Lord so wouldn't you want to do everything good for the Lord rather than bad for the Lord so my story is I was saved in 2018 I went to a friend's Pentecostal church and I was baptized of water and by spirit and that was the first time really God started opening my eyes really to find out truths of had been hidden from my life for a long time I used to think nothing of it but going to watch horror movies and, and go you know to parties and I'd look forward to do uh, I'd look forward to all these Halloween parties every year because it was cool you know you're hanging out with your friends and all that but again you got to understand that this is detestable to the Lord Jesus so we're not to um, <clears throat> we're not to partake in that stuff and I'm gonna we're gonna show you in these videos here that you're gonna watch that what I'm telling you is the truth but I wanted to just give you my personal testimony on it because I used to be one of the people that watched these crazy movies, went to the Halloween parties, dressed up as a little kid. I used to dress up as Michael Myers and scare everyone. And I thought it was funny. And a lot of your friends probably think it's great. But again, folks, you got to understand there's real evil behind that day and that it's a pagan ritualistic holiday. And it's not really a holiday, but it's a holiday for the high witches and warlocks that serve Baal and Moloch, which is Satan, which is Satan worship. And God does not want us to partake in that. So if you are doing this, folks, you need to really renounce it and take it out of your life. Because at the end of your life, if you don't do that, you are going to be judged on it and do you want God to say to you you know f uh, be gone be you know be gone for me for I, I know you not I mean you want to be on the God side so you want to do everything that God wants you to do right now you can look up in the Bible all of the things I'm telling you because there's certain sections of the Bible that that clearly state all of what I'm telling you I'm not very good with picking out absolute verses I have to read the Bible a lot more myself but I know it's in there and this next video clip that I'm gonna play for you in a minute here is gonna go over that and it comes from a channel called um, truth Uned unedited truth truth unedited on YouTube he used to have truth unedited.com but that site doesn't exist anymore I tried to go to it myself I got this video back in 2017 and how magically it was, well not magically, but truthfully from God that I 
was to go to a church in 2018 and get saved for the first time. Because, see, I was I grew up Catholic, folks, and I thought, oh, I'm saved. I was baptized as a little kid. I'm great. You know, that's what the church teaches, the Catholic church. But that's not what the Bible says. Jesus says in John 3 through 6 that unless you be born again, which is a second time, you, uh, a man or a woman may not enter the kingdom of heaven unless you are baptized of water and, and by spirit. And so I did exactly what the Lord asked. I was called to that church one day by the Holy Spirit, and I got baptized, folks. And I suggest each and every one of you do it. Now, a lot of different Christian denominations seem to think, well, oh, you just have to speak the words, and then you're, you're good, and everything's good. Well, why would you want to take a chance with your salvation, folks? Why not give the baptism of water a chance? Why not go to a, a pastor if you've not done it and ask him, hey, I want to be baptized of water and by spirit and do what the Lord asks. Because Nicodemus said to Jesus, which was one of his best friends, and he was a rabbi and said, rabbi, well, because he, he, he told, he said to Jesus, because at the time Jesus was considered a rabbi and only very few knew that he was God until he started performing the miracles, right? So he said, Rabbi, how can I do, how can I do such a thing? How can a man go into a, what, my mother's womb again and, and be born again? He says, marvel not that I told you this, that, but that you do the will of God. In other words, you're a, you're a rabbi yourself, meaning he's telling Nicodemus and you don't know what God asks of you. Uh, it's clear to see that people have a lot of pride and a lot of, um, uh, I don't know what you, I don't want to call it envy. It's not envy, but it's almost like, oh, I don't want to do that. You know why a lot of people don't want to do it? Because I believe the devil is blinding them from the truth of that so that they won't do it because the devil knows that that is the way you are saved. So it really only takes five or 10 minutes for you to do it, folks. You get it over and done with, but in your heart, you believe 100% that God has raised from the dead and he came to die for your sins and that when you do go through that process and that baptism, that you now are a actual child of God because now you've come to him out of your own free will and you've come to him a second time in your life. See, when you're a baby, you're not aware of your baptism. Your mother and father brings you and you get... They, they just, in the Catholic Church, they only sprinkle water over your head, but you need to be submerged. Anyways, that's what I did. I suggest you do it. You can debate this all you want. I won't debate it with you, but why would you not want to do what the Lord is asking you of? Now, to finish up with the Halloween talk before we get into the main part of the video here, I just wanted to say that if you're thinking about going out for Halloween or any of these parties, in, to save face and embarrassment from your friends and family that want you to do these things, maybe you should, what I suggest you do is just make up an excuse, don't lie, but say, hey, listen, I'm busy this day, why don't you spend some time at, a, at your local church, if you're a member of the church, or how about spend some time in prayer with God in private away from your friends and family and ask God to forgive people for what they've done and uh, and to change their ways and not to be practicing these heathen practices that God doesn't want us to do. Uh, that's a good suggestion. And we should also pray that God heals our nation, heals the land, and helps the people in the other countries that are being oppressed, especially by this COVID-19 lie that's going on, folks. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on. But Today is the time of change. Today is the day of salvation, folks. Ask God to renounce these things from your life. Ask him to take them away, and he will. He'll forgive you. But if you don't do it and you don't have a forgiving spirit to ask God that, then how is he going to forgive you? He says, for those sins you shall forgive, I will forgive you. For those that you don't, I will, not, I will retain. I will not forgive you. So you need to... Ask God, please forgive me for what I've done, and he will do it, folks. Cry out to him, ask him for help. He will help you. So, in essence, folks, the day of Halloween should not be even recognized, and you should not be dressing up your house with all kinds of costumes and make it look spooky, because what that does, folks, is it invites evil spirits into your house. 
it, it's it's like opening the door to the devil and say, come on in. My house is all covered with crosses and crucifixes with Jesus and, you know, things. But all of those things are esoteric or aesthetic. They, they don't, they mean a lot to me because it's God. But <clears throat> all of those other things is all pagan worship, folks. Don't worship the devil. Worship God. You should be worshiping God. So, anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you watch it all the way through because there's just so much important stuff. And this is a two-part video, really, uh, coming up because you have Truth Unedited, and then I'm adding in Neftali channel, N-E-P-H-T-A-L-I, Neftali. He's over on YouTube. I don't know if this video that he had still exists there because it may have been taken down, so that's why I'm going to add it into this video. So watch this all the way through, folks because it's, it's really an important message and it really hits home and it hits hard to your heart. And uh, there's a lot more information than I just told you. So anyways, thanks a lot for coming to the channel here and I will see you guys on some future videos. Thanks a lot. When looking at the world today, it's very obvious to understand why the Father commanded us not to be of this world. When we look at many of the practices, holidays, and rituals that we participate in, the reasons we should not be of this world become so clear. A majority of the holidays and customs that are celebrated in the world today have pagan and occult roots. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11 says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. And this is why I'm making this video. Over time, we have accepted pagan and occult practices that have been marketed to us as being fun and harmless, but that is so far from the actual truth. The celebration of Halloween is something that truly emphasizes this point. The reason is because the history of these things is not properly taught to us. We are only taught about the fun things, like wearing costumes and going around and getting candy from the neighborhood, but we never have been taught where all these things come from. We tend to just accept it as being harmless fun, but in actuality, the truth is, if we are ever taught the truth about these things, it's a fact that a majority of society will not partake in them, even those that don't believe in Elohim. There has always been an agenda to blur the lines between good and evil. Also, an agenda to initiate the world into the occult and to accept the things of Lucifer. After you understand more about Halloween, you will clearly see that this agenda is truly in the end stages. Let's begin. Before we get into the history, let's talk about what Elohim says about this subject. At 3 John chapter 1, verse 11, it says, Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. He who does good is of Elohim, but he who does evil has not seen Elohim. Romans chapter 12, verse 9 says, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. And lastly, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21 and 22 say, Test all things, hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. So this probably isn't a newsflash to you, but Elohim hates evil. But maybe what you may not understand is that he wants you to hate evil as well and have no fellowship with it. So what now needs to be proven is why Halloween is evil. Because many people think that if they just don't do the demons and the goblins, but have nice harmless costumes, that they aren't doing anything wrong. Or maybe if they do a trick or treat even at their church, then it's all good. Now that you understand through scripture that the Father wants us to abstain from and abhor every form of evil and not imitate it, let me show you what Halloween is. While Halloween masquerades as harmless childish fun, it's serious business in the occult world. Witchcraft, Wicca, Satanism, and Paganism believe on the night of Halloween, devils and spirits are unleashed. They perform their most hideous and potent rituals on the night of Halloween. Halloween glorifies death and worship to Baal or the devil. Now we can go back deep into Paganism with Nimrod and Semiramis to find its pagan roots, but much of what is done in Halloween comes from the ancient Druids. Halloween began over 2,000 years ago in the 2nd or 3rd BC among the Celtics and their pagan priests called the Druids. The Druids are thought to be by many history's king of the occult. Witchcraft, Satanism, Paganism, 
and virtually all facets of the occult acquire instruction from the druids. Halloween can be traced directly back to Samhain, the ancient Celtic harvest festival honoring the Lord of the Dead, also known as the Lord of Darkness, aka Lucifer. Druids were devil worshippers. The druids recognized summer and winter seasons. They celebrated two special nights of the year, Beltane and Samhain. Beltane took place on May 1st and marked the birth of summer. Samhain occurred on November 1st and signified the death of summer. Samhain means summer's end. Just Google Samhain, summer's end, and you will see the date each year. Now, the word doesn't look how it's pronounced. Samhain is a night celebrating death and hell. It was the Druid's most important ritual. It was a terrifying night of human sacrifices, and it was the original Halloween. So Halloween and Samhain are the same thing, but let's keep going. The Druid's New Year started on November 1st, so obviously their New Year's Eve is October 31st. The Druids believe that on this night, all of the people who died in the past year would rise up and search for the passageway to the netherworld. On this night, the passageway or veil between both worlds was its thinnest. Their lord, Samhain, would roam the earth in search of these souls to capture them and take them to the world of darkness. To this day, some people put lights in the windows to help the dead find their way and keep Lord Samhain away from taking them. The World Book Encyclopedia states, The Celts believed that the dead could walk among the living at this time. The living could visit with the dead. This ancient belief was even paired with the ability of some people to communicate with these spirits of the dead. And at Samhain, this was something to be embraced, even celebrated. They felt they surely could find some way to capitalize with communicating to these spirits like gathering a co-power or the spirits giving them knowledge, etc. So this is where Halloween and its customs started, with the Celtics and their pagan devil-worshipping priests, the Druids. So as we move more into history, we go to the beginning of the 7th century where we see Pope Gregory I. The Roman Catholic Church was moving along with their world domination in the name of God, and they were now seeking a mass conversion of Britain and Ireland, where of course the Celtics are from. In order to assist the conversion, instead of doing away with the native people's customs and beliefs, the Pope adopted them. They didn't do away with Samhain, they adopted it, but changed the name. Samhain to the Roman Catholic Church was now All Saints Day. In the 8th century, Pope Gregory III is said to have moved the date of All Saints Day from May 13th to November 1st, again the same day as Samhain. He did this when he dedicated a chapel in St. Peter's in honor of All Saints. All Saints Day, also called All Hallows Day, Hallow Mass, or Feast of All Saints in the Catholic Church, is a day commemorating all the saints of the church, both known and unknown, who have attained heaven. This is a day of celebration and prayer to the dead saints. This is not biblical in the slightest. In Latin America, this time is also known as the Day of the Dead, again with people praying to the dead. So October 31st, the night before All Saints Day, also known as All Hallows Day, is the time of the most intense activity both human and supernatural. They believe it allows the souls of the dead to come back to earth and walk among the living on this day. This is the eve of All Hallows Day. Let me break it down. The day before All Hallows Day, October 31st, was recognized as All Hallows Eve. Remember, All Saints Day is also known as All Hallows Day. Hallow replacing saints. Hallow as a verb is to honor as holy, but as a noun it means saint. Een is a contraction of eve or evening before. This is where we get Halloween. Hollow plus een, the eve of All Hallows Day. This is the day where people worship the dead. Halloween is a lot like Christmas. The Roman Catholic Church adopted it to appease their converts and try to place a holy name and cause around a pagan devil worshipping tradition. Now that you know where Halloween comes from, let's talk about the customs and practices that are associated with Halloween. Going back to the Druids, because again, this tradition comes from them, 
the Druids performed horrifying human sacrifices and other vile rituals during Samhain. Let there be no doubt, Samhain night was a terrifying covenant with death and with hell. The Druids believed during Samhain the mystical veil separating the dead from the living opened. The Druids taught that these Roman spirits loosed on Samhain when searching for a body to possess. Druid priests led the people to diabolical worship ceremonies in which horses, cats, black sheep, oxen, human beings, and other offerings were rounded up, stuffed into wicker cages, and burned to death. This was done to appease Lord Samhain and keep spirits from harming them. Again, Halloween has always been a celebration of death. This is also where the origin of bonfires come from. The word bonfire actually comes from bone fire which was all that was left after the sacrificial ceremonies were ended. To obtain offerings for these bonfires, Druid priests would go from home to home asking for animals and humans. Those who gave were promised prosperity in the coming year, and those who did not were cursed and threatened. Trick or Treating Some people thought they could exorcise these spirits from their presence, meaning cast them out, or free themselves from any evil sway one of them might bring. It was believed that all of the wandering spirits would get hungry. By setting out food for these spirits, even providing shelter of some kind for them, you could appease them. If the living didn't provide enough food or treats for these spirits, the spirits could easily reciprocate or trick the living in many ways. Many feared the terrible things which may happen to them if they didn't honor the holiday and the spiritual manifestations throughout so they left out food and treats for the spirits. This is where we see the beginning of trick or treat. It's the demons saying to you, give me something or else I will torment you. Halloween Costumes The very people who went out looking to burn animals and humans to death feared the spirits they thought to be so powerful on this night. They believed they could escape the wrath of evil spirits by wearing ghostly or ghoulish costumes themselves. They thought that by disguising themselves to look like evil spirits, the wandering spirits of the earth might mistake them for one of their own and leave them alone. This is why people dressed up in costumes for Halloween in the past. They were hiding from the spirits and demons which were roaming the earth. Jack-o'-lanterns The original jack-o'-lantern was not a pumpkin or turnip, but a severed human head. The druids reverenced the severed human head. They proudly decorated their houses and temples with bloodied severed heads. The Druids believed the head housed the soul. It is believed that faces, rather than other images or symbols, were originally carved onto the pumpkin because they gave the jack-o'-lantern the look of a head. The Celts of ancient times believed that the head was the most sacred part of the human body, for it housed a person's immortal soul. When people make jack-o'-lanterns, they are representing human severed heads. You see, there are so many customs that have to do with Halloween that are completely evil. But based on these three I mentioned, you should get the point. When you give out candy to the trick-or-treaters, or even allow your kids to be trick-or-treaters, you are participating in druid practices. When you or your kids dress up in Halloween costumes, you are participating in a satanic festival. When you carve jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkins, you are imitating a severed head. Understand, this is all about spirits and demons, and whether you know it or not, you are participating in customs that have to do with the occult and Satanism. You may not be engaging in witchcraft per se, but you are absolutely contributing to the wicked spiritual energy that exists. And if we go back to the beginning, when I reference the scriptures, Elohim wants us to hate evil and abstain from every form of it. But let me just add a few more points to drive this home. On the Church of Satan website, Satanic High Priestess Blanche Barton praises Halloween by saying, it, Halloween, gives the most mundane people the opportunity to taste wickedness for one night. They have a chance to dance with the devil. I see Satanists all over the world meeting in small groups this night, and Halloweenans 500 years hence, to raise a glass to the infernal host. In her book, Like Lands to the Slaughter, former occultist Johanna Michelson reveals Halloween is also a prime recruiting season for Satanists. Like I said when I started this, one agenda of the world is to blur the lines between good and evil. Another agenda is to initiate the world into the occult and to accept the things of Lucifer. 
The majority take part in these things like they are fun activities where people get to dress up and kids get to get candy. But this is all about spirits and demons roaming the earth and the celebration of the dead the next day. And the more places that celebrate it, the more wicked spiritual energy that is being transmitted amongst the world. Halloween openly promotes death, devils, witches, and flagrant appearances of evil. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 36 says, But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. Participating in a day that celebrates death and the dead is hypocritical of one that says they love the Father. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 20 through 22 says, Rather, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to Elohim. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Adon and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Adon's table and of the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Adon to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? I know you do not mean to provoke the father to jealousy. It's just deception that we've been born into. Things we've grown up accepting without knowing what we were doing. But this is why he tells us not to be of this world. Because if we would follow that instruction, it would cut out a majority of the deception that we get ourselves caught up in. In the last scripture I just gave, it says he does not want us to have fellowship with demons. You can't drink the cup of Elohim and the cup of demons. You can't sit at the father's table and the table of demons. Many people privately ask me questions and one of them is if it's okay for their kids to participate in the Halloween celebrations at their church because their church softens up the day and makes it about the Messiah. They don't allow the demon costumes and allow a safe place for their kids to participate without getting in with all the evil. I don't like making bold statements telling people what to do because everybody's life is different. But let me say this boldly. Not only is it not right for you to allow your child to participate in their event, but you should not be in that church. You may take that as extremely bold, but let me explain why I said that. Go back through all that information I just went through on the wickedness of this day. Now your pastor and leaders don't need to know all of that history. What they should know is very simple doctrine that I keep repeating. Not to be of this world. Do not be a friend of this world. I say this scripture often in my videos, but it's always worth repeating. James chapter 4 verse 4 says, Adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with Elohim? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of Elohim. You see, if your pastor doesn't hold this understanding, then they can lead you to becoming an enemy of Elohim by allowing you to embrace this world, but just tweak the obvious devilish things. And if they're wrong about something that's so obviously evil, what else could they be leading you astray with? I'm not saying that it's intentional and that they are purposely doing this, but in the end, it doesn't matter. Your church should be protecting you from things like this and not teaching a form of conformity. Just by recognizing this day and participating in it, regardless of the few tweaks you do, you are giving glory to Satan and dishonor to Yahweh. You are trying to sit at the table of the Father and of demons. First, I understand what your church is trying to do, and if it were that simple, life would be much more simpler. But we need to stay away from all of this wickedness completely, acting like the day doesn't exist. And pastors that take the role of being shepherds of the Father's people should know this. And if they don't know this, why are they shepherding the sheep? Beware of churches that are bringing conformity like this. It is not harmless. They shouldn't be changing the name to trunk or treat or hallowed be thy name or whatever else they want to try to use just to replace the name Halloween. If they know the day is so wicked that they need to change the name, then they know enough that they shouldn't have any involvement with it whatsoever. And if you're a pastor who has unknowingly participated in this, please humble yourself and correct this with your flock. Let me make this clear. I'm not judging you if you have participated in this in the past. It's deception, and we all have fell for different forms of deception in our lives. This is the goal of the devil, to deceive us. So I'm not going against you for your past. I'm trying to assist you with your future and your children's. Be happy that we have been afforded more time and our time has not run out on us. We have time to correct our mistakes and repent from them. This video was made to first inform you of the things that you might not have been aware of in hopes that it leads to repentance and correction. 
We all are not perfect, but we need to examine our lives and look at the things that we do and partake in. The Bible, the word of Elohim, gives us instruction, and if we place it as the authority and not the ways of this world, we will cut out the amount of deception we fall prey to. The devil preys on our ignorance and lack of knowledge. He preys on the fact that we do not read our Bibles and trust our pastors to steer us in the right direction. Let me end this with clear instruction. Stay away from Halloween. Do not allow your kids to celebrate it. Don't let them dress up in costumes. If it is a problem for them, keep them out of school on that day. Do not do any trick-or-treating. Keep the light off at your home and don't answer the door when people come knocking. No costumes for you adults either, no matter how small. And no Halloween parties, not even if all your friends are going or you have the best costume. Stay out of it. You need to literally act as if this day does not exist and continue to worship and communicate with the Father. If you feel weak about something, pray about it and give it to Him. I feel that this year, 2018, there's going to be a massive amount of wicked demonic energy generated. You do not want to be a part of it. By participating, you make yourself fair game to spirits and demons. Satanists and witches convene together and cast many spells on this night. This is not a day of fun, but of extreme witchcraft and none of it is harmless. After watching this, I think you should definitely understand why. Don't lean on your own understandings and justifications. If you love Elohim, let his word have the last say. Don't play with evil. Jesus spoke these words in Matthew chapter 24 verse 4 and the Bible reads and Jesus answered and said to them take heed that no one deceives you other translations say watch out that no one deceives you or see to it that no one misleads you this will be the starting point for this video, the words of Jesus Christ in Matthew 24 verse 4. Now what exactly is deception? Deception can be described as an act or a statement which misleads or hides the truth. Deception can be an act or a statement that promotes a belief, concept or idea that is not true. Deception is a trick or an illusion. Deception is when you dress up something harmful as enjoyable. It's when you call sin a guilty pleasure. When the truth is, in the eyes of God, sin is sin and there is no guilty pleasure. So my first point was related to the words of Jesus, take heed that no one deceives you. And my second point was the definition of deception. And before I move on to the third, I want you to note that because Jesus warned us to watch out and take heed, we should understand that deception is meant to happen. It's designed, it's maneuvered or presented in such a way that it happens without you realizing it. That's why Jesus gives us the warning, effectively saying, watch out, do not be misled. Don't be tricked or fall for that illusion. And so now the third point is more of a question. Who deceives? Who is it that would want you and I to be misled? Who was Jesus talking about? In 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 to 15 the Bible reads For such people are false apostles, deceitful workers masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising then if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness, their end will be what their actions deserve. The Bible gives us a list here of all the potential forms and sources of deception. False apostles, 
deceitful workers masquerading as apostles of Christ. And right at the top of that chain of command sits the devil, who the Bible says masquerades as an angel of light. So this means that the devil tries to take advantage of our love as humans for the light, and he does this in order to deceive. Because think of it this way, if we saw the devil in his true form, I am sure none of us would tolerate any of his ways or temptations. We wouldn't fall for his tricks, we would be so quick to cast him down in the name of Jesus. We would be so quick to quote scripture and to rebuke him, all because we could see him for who and what he really is. But the devil will never show you his real form, instead he will present tricks or illusions. He will mislead, all in order to deceive. He will dress a sin such as pornography as a guilty pleasure, when the word of God tells us that our bodies are temples for the Holy Ghost. The devil will dress up evil as good. He will present false teachings as new groundbreaking philosophy or modern religion, when at the base of it it's all deception, it's all lies that are meant to take you and I away from God. So we've covered what Jesus said about deception in Matthew 24. We have defined deception, we've identified who deceives. Now my final point is more of an example of deception, so that you can see how it operates. Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 says, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Verse 8 is where I'd like to focus on, and the Bible reads, See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world, rather than on Christ. Verse 8 in another translation says, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty detail, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. With this Bible verse in mind, should Christians be celebrating Halloween? Or could it be that it is one of the most popular deceitful traditions in this day and age. Consider the following. Halloween is the devil's holiday. Its tradition and roots are based on satanic rituals and practices. If you look at the carved out pumpkins, the jack-o'-lanterns, whether it's true or not, the story of how it originated is from a man who invited the devil in, for reasons I care not to go into, simply because we do not need to dwell on this stuff, but for the sake of knowledge, whether it's a myth or not, the roots of it, the roots of it, are based from a man's interaction with the devil, and effectively a deal that they made. Trick or treating, evolved from an ancient tradition of putting out treats and foods to spirits who roamed the streets. In some parts of the world, Halloween is celebrated as the Day of the Dead. And finally, I read a quote that an ex-witch said, and I quote, The history of Halloween is ripe with rampant demonic paganism and extreme dark rituals. 
every aspect of Halloween is in remembrance of what was. These are just a few points related to Halloween. And before I go any further, there are three passages in the Bible that I want us to look at. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22, which says, Abstain from every form of evil. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Another translation says, Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. And finally, Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 in part A, the Bible reads, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So putting it all together, if Jesus said, watch out so that you may not be deceived, if the Bible says the devil masquerades as an angel of light, then what does an event such as Halloween an event deep with evil roots tell you about the times we are living in. These are times where the celebration of dark rituals is being dressed up and presented as innocent fun, as an opportunity to dress up and wear costumes, a prime example of what deception is. So with all of this being said, I want to remind you not to be afraid. Do not fear. 1 John chapter 5 verse 4 to 5 says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 The Bible reads, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. I encourage you today not to open yourself up to any kind of spiritual door, but instead declare the word of God over your home and plead the blood of Jesus on every doorpost and on every corner of your home. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, and the power that's in his name is the same power that will defeat the devil when he tries to rise up against you and I. Michael Myers and the Legion within him. We're in a day and age where the occult is celebrated. The Halloween series released a film recently of Michael Myers called Halloween Kills and it's based on Michael Myers. I grew up watching a lot of these films in the 1980s and 90s. Um, my brother used to have me binge watching a lot of these films with him. I used to be so scared my brother used to have me watch Freddy Krueger, Jason, and many of the others, and he used to spook me and scare me. There's something about these films that brings out something inside of you. You start hearing noises around your house. You become a little bit timid because you don't know if something could be around the corner. It's because there's a spirit attached to these films. You see, the Bible describes this spirit as the spirit of fear. In 2 Timothy 1.7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. These films promote something contrary to love, power and a sound mind. And what many of you do not understand that are addicts of many of these films is that once you welcome that spirit of fear because you want to be entertained in Halloween, that spirit is not going to leave your home once Halloween is over. And once you've welcomed this spirit, 
I want you to understand that Ephesians 6 12 tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities once you welcome these beings they're not gonna leave on November 1st because Halloween is over you've allowed an entity to partake of you and your family and these spirits bring with them anxiety depression oppression hauntings and more Michael Myers as you Look at the films. I've looked at him because since I was little, I've been watching these films. He had a doctor and his doctor's name was Dr. Loomis. And Dr. Loomis always described Michael as a kid who was extremely quiet, who had a demonic look in his eyes, and who was essentially a vessel of pure evil. He committed murders when he was a child, and he had to be placed into an institution to protect people. Because no man could contain Michael. No person could hold off what was within Michael. Michael had to be bound and kept in a place to protect humanity. That was the case until Michael escaped. And when Michael escaped the institution that was trying to hold him down at that point in time, man was in trouble in society. Because Michael, whatever was within Michael, whatever entities were within Michael were purely demonic. Now, when you look at the scriptures, we see an example of a character just like this in Mark 5, 1 on forward. You see, Jesus had came over to the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he came out of a ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. You know, when Hollywood releases these films of the exorcist, of paranormal activities people go and they get entertained but they don't understand that after the entertainment there's something that follows them because you've been entertained by a spirit and because you've celebrated an unclean spirit when you have to be entertained by an unclean spirit something is wrong so Jesus saw this man who had an unclean spirit within him but this man also dwelt among the tombs no man could bind him, not even with chain. As you look at Michael Myers, he is depicted as a man that is a man, yes, but some call him the shape of evil. Others say that he is supernatural, that you can attack him and attack him and attack him, but he has supernatural strength to get back up because there's something inside of him that man cannot contain. This was also the case of the man that Jesus saw in Mark 5. He was a man that was often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Can Michael be tamed in the films? He can't. And always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him. We're talking about demons. We're talking about entities that are celebrated in our modern day man. We're talking about entities that are celebrated in our modern day society. You know, eventually the unclean spirit comes out of that man and Jesus has a conversation. And when he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion for we are many. We're in a society where legion, where unclean spirits, where spirit of fear is running rampant. If people were to look around them with spiritual eyes, they would actually see that most that are near or around them are filled with demons, demonic entities, welcomed by man into their homes, into their families. When we look at these actors that play such characters as well, I want you to listen to the man who's playing Michael Myers in this last film. He's played it in the, la in the previous film as well. Listen to how he gets ready to be in character. That's really great. Um, how did you, because it is, I mean, the shape is kind of known as being evil incarnate. So, you know, to tap into kind of that energy, um, is that something that, you know, you tapped into and then had to shake off after the end well, of shooting? Or? You know, I, I because I have a lot of experience working in morphogenetic fields, um, because I volunteer for a family constellation therapy group that 
yeah, that, that was, you might be interested, a German Jesuit priest actually created this therapy, studying the Zulu and laid it over a Jungian model. So there's a very, there's a well-worn path into this morphogenetic field. Um, I can go into it with a breath. I mean, I know what I'm going to do. I take a breath, boom, it's in me, and I'm living in it. When the scene is over, whether it's five takes or seven takes or whatever, I stay in that space. Then when I'm done, I breathe out of it, and it's done. I'm back at the gym. Um, people may judge it as evil incarnate. I look at it like this. If a cat kills a mouse, is that evil? No, it's what he does. Right. I'm doing what Michael Myers does, and I have no judgment on it. I'm just doing it. Well, they say the best villains don't know that they're villains, so well, that's kind I of guess. Yeah. yeah, that's that's really interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's it's I mean, and it's fun. It's it's fun, like doing I mean, living out the shadow side of humanity that most human beings are afraid to look at. Look, man, there's killers in all of us. Yeah. You know, most of humanity does not want to look at this, but so being able to explore that on a visceral level, you know, because our bodies don't know when, we, when we're acting, our bodies don't know the difference. If we're really committed to that action, our minds and bodies don't know the difference. It's real. Right. You know, so it's, it's, it's a powerful, powerful experience. He says that he empties himself via meditation and he allows something to come within him when he is playing Michael. And then when the scene is over, he has to go off into a corner and allow whatever got inside of him to leave. You see, because in his mind, although he is using fake knives, fake axes, fake tools to kill people, he is physically, mentally performing the act. That's why to him, he allows an entity to come within him to play the character so that the killings look real, so that the killings feel brutal. Yet we're in a society that calls evil good and good evil. Yet we're in a society, Isaiah 5.20, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness. This is a season that many churches put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Hey neighbor, my name is Anna and I want to invite you to our Trunk or Treat event on Saturday, October 30th from 2 to 4 p.m. here at Sycamore View Church. This year's event will be COVID friendly with lots of candy and fun for the whole family. When you arrive on our campus, we'll have you park in the back behind our buildings, walk through this alleyway and our lobby out front to the candy stations. Don't forget to bring your candy bag or bucket. Once you've gone through the candy line one time, you'll come back through the lobby and this alleyway to return to your cars and back onto Sycamore View Road to make room for more guests waiting to join the fun. Hi Trinity Church, how are you doing today? I pray that your week is going well. I am so excited. Two more weeks till Trunk or Treat at Journey Church. Thank you for the donations that you've been bringing in every Sunday. We have lots of candy, but we need a lot of more. So keep bringing the candy in. Um, last year we had about 20 cars, 23 cars. This year I would love to reach 40 cars and go all out this year. This is a great way to open up to our community around us and let them know that, hey, we're Journey Church and we're located right here. Come see us on Sundays and join us here. And the professing Christians allow themselves to be placed into a position in life where they can flip flop left and right when they want to be Christians. And that's accepted in the modern day version of Christianity in this world. But the word of God tells you that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And if we wrestle not against flesh and blood, we're wrestling against entities, principalities, unclean spirits in dark places that will come up to you that'll pretend that they're friendly that'll come to you in the version of entertainment. Well, what are they entertaining you from? And what stays with you after you've been entertained? You know, this is a season where Christians need to understand that you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. 1 Corinthians 10, 21. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. In Wicca, and in many other pagan religions, they're celebrating Nimrod in this month and the rise of Nimrod. 
Nimrod in Genesis 10, 9, he was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. In many other pagan holidays, the Queen of Heaven is celebrated. Jeremiah 7, 18 speaks of the Queen of Heaven. Well, the horned god, he is celebrated in many cultures and many do not know that it goes right back to Babel. It goes right back to where the tower was built. It goes right back to the rebellion that brought everyone together as one that God had to destroy. Yet I tell you today, is the world not trying to rebuild the tower? Yet I share with you today, as you look at the dystopian world that we're living in, is the world not trying to once again rebuild what God tore down? The spirit of Nimrod is alive and well today, and that Antichrist spirit is going to come full circle. And many of you already see it. It's all around you. But as you come together with your families to be entertained in this month of Halloween, understand that to many in Wicca and to many in witchcraft, not all, because there are to many of them in some Wiccan tradition, by this time of the year, the goddess, which is the queen of heaven, right, has entered into her place of rest. They believe she is the old one, the earth mother, the wise one we turn to when we need advice. She goes off. But now in this day, another one rises, the god, the horned one, the stag of great antlers, the god of the wild hunt. He is the animal that dies so that we may eat, and the grains and corn that once lived in the field before our harvest. The god of the wild hunt. Nimrod was a mighty hunter before the Lord. As you study many of these traditions, you begin to see that there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. Satan is a whore that sells itself to humanity and any version that you want him to be sold to you on. As you look at society and world cultures when they worshipped Pan, what was he? A horned god. When you look at Wicca, the Wiccan green man, what was he? A horned god. Moloch, a horned god. The American devil, a horned devil. But it is a light thing to the people. Like Ezekiel 8, 17, Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abomination which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger, and lo, they put a branch to their nose. I pray that me and you today, that we do not try to provoke our Lord God to anger, that we stop trying to sell the evil as pure entertainment, and understand that it's much more than that. It's much more than that. The devil is defeated via the blood of Jesus Christ. If you have allowed the spirit of fear into your home, if you have allowed an entity to partake into your home via the form of entertainment, you can submit to Jesus Christ. You then resist the devil and he will flee. But many want the devil to flee without them submitting to God. And that is a problem. Oh, why won't, why won't God deliver me already? Why won't God deliver my family? Why won't God deliver my house? You want the devil to flee, but will you submit? It all begins with your obedience. It all begins with you. You may be the only one worshiping Jesus in your house. Therefore, the responsibility is great within you to stand firm in the word, to stand firm in the word and to live the gospel. And when you do, miracles will happen in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for our children that are in schools that are facing the pressure from their friends to celebrate Halloween. Heavenly Father, we pray for all of the families out there that are learning about all these things, for them to realize the dangers of not only Halloween, but our culture of entertainment as a whole we're in a day and age where satan comes as an angel of light and satan is not going to knock at people's door and tell them to celebrate the occult because most will not celebrate him yet satan is going to knock at people's door and tell them to go ahead and partake of a little bit of the occult via entertainment partake of a little bit of this a little bit of that 
For Satan comes as an angel of light and he understands that all it takes is just one little entity to come inside a home, to come inside a family. And that entity, as time persists, literally, will easily become a legion. And that legion brings destruction. But that legion has to submit to the power of Jesus Christ because there is no entity that cannot be defeated by the blood of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we repent of our sins. We repent of our sins. We repent of our wicked ways. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, to come inside of us and convict us of all of the things that we need to get rid of our homes, of all of the witchcraft that needs to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen, God is able and God loves you and God cares for you. You see, God is transparent, unlike the God of this world. The God of this world has to trick people into accepting him. Don't you notice that? And everything that Satan does is via a trick. Trick or treat, you see that? It's manipulation. Give me a treat or you're gonna get a trick. That's manipulation. Yet you're teaching your children, trick or treat. You're teaching your children, you better give me something or I'm gonna manipulate you. If I told my dad that when I was growing up, he would beat me with the chancla. Why are Hispanic children so well behaved? The secret is the Hispanic culture, which emphasizes boundaries, developmental growth, and a traditional technique known as la chancla. For centuries, the secret of La Chancla has helped millions of Latina moms focus attention to each child's unique needs, instill values of fairness and fair play, encourage healthy eating habits, learn the discipline required to excel in academics, moral reasoning, La Chancla can help every parent master a truly hands-off parenting style. La My dad used to actually have a sign in the front door that would say, we don't trick or treat. And when he didn't know how to spell it in English, he would just write it in his own way. You know, no trick or treat. You know, it was funny. But my dad did not do none of that. Because when you tell a person, trick or treat, you're telling them, give me something or I'm gonna do something evil to you. And that's what they're teaching our kids. They're teaching them pure rebellion. Teach your kids the godly ways of Jesus Christ. Okay, I love you guys very much. God bless you guys. Thank you for always being a part of this channel. Consider sharing this video. Go ahead and click the share button and share it to somebody via text, on Facebook, on Twitter, however you wanna share it. Not only of this channel, but of any channel that you enjoy, consider sharing the videos because they do not show up in the algorithm of YouTube.